Well, they call it the American Rescue Plan, but who is it really rescuing? Over the weekend, House Democrats jammed through their massive $1.9 trillion spending bill over solid Republican opposition. Moderate Democrats Jared Golden of Maine and Kurt Schrader of Oregon were the only two lawmakers to cross party lines, joining Republicans in opposition to the pork-filled bill that has less to do with providing relief for the American people and more to do with bailing out mismanaged blue states and pushing a slush fund for Democratic allies. This includes the billions in subsidies that pro-abortion Democrats are using this bill to funnel for abortions, not only here in the U.S., but also abroad. Joining me now to talk about the left's 591-page excuse for a rescue plan is Congressman Jason Smith. He is the ranking member of the Budget Committee. He represents Missouri's 8th Congressional District and also serves on the Ways and Means Committee. Congressman, welcome to the program. Tony, it's great to be with you. Now, you led the opposition to this bill, uh, pointing to the fact that you're all for targeted relief, but so much of this bill has nothing to do with providing aid to the restaurants, small businesses, and the families impacted by the shutdown of the economy because of the coronavirus. That's, that's exactly the case, Tony. You know, I call this the Biden bailout bill. It's not the American recovery bill. And we want targeted relief, but this is the wrong plan at clearly the wrong time and for all the wrong reasons. If you look at what's in the piece of legislation, less than 9% of all the funding in this $1.9 trillion package actually goes to healthcare spending that is used to crush the virus, to put vaccines in people's arms. But there's 511, well, it's 510 billion that goes to incentivize state and local lockdowns, which I refer to as the blue state bailout. They actually changed the formula from all the prior COVID bipartisan packages to help shift the resources that states that basically voted for Donald Trump will get a significant reduction amount of money of what they normally would, but states that voted for Biden will get a, a very, very significant increase. For example, California will get a $5.4 billion increase, and New York will get a $2.1 billion increase. And states like my home in Missouri will get an $880 million decrease. Uh, Jason, let, let, me, let me just stop on that point for a moment, because there's, there's other factors here. Not only are the states who voted for Joe Biden, the mostly Democratic states, but they're also the states that held, had the onerous restrictions that shut down businesses in the private economy, which destroyed their own revenue sources. And so doing that, now they want to look to the federal government to bail them out. Who's going to help those small businesses? This money ought to be going to those small businesses that were sh basically put out of business by these Democratic governments. Where you could get bipartisan support is to help those 100,000 small businesses that their doors have been shuttered because those local governments, those state governments that lock them down, that shut their doors, they're the ones that's hurting. You don't need to bail out the states that actually implemented the policies to destroy those small right. businesses. It's all wrong. Right. You're absolutely correct. And I think most of America see that. For those states that did it the right way, they're being penalized by the Democratic Party in this bill. That's exactly the case. You know, the state that get punished the most are states like Florida, Georgia, South Dakota, um, Missouri, Texas. Uh, you see that, and it's, it's very unfortunate. Now, let's talk, uh, Jason, about the Republicans' attempt to try to minimize the impact of this and make the bill a, a, a little better, um, although it's, you know, it, it's hard to make a bad bill better, but I understand what the Republicans are trying to do. But you offered, and I say you, the Republicans offered about 200, almost 250 amendments. How many of those did the Democrats take? Yeah, we offered over 250 amendments, and they only accepted two. And the two that they accepted, clearly I think it was a mistake because we're in the process, of course. We don't have in-person hearings. Uh, they, they require us to have all virtual hearings. 
And so there's, if you if you watch them on C-SPAN, it's quite a get a bag of popcorn. It can get interesting because people will cast those crazy ways. And I think the chairmen of both of those committees, and one of it was financial services, uh, I think they voted the wrong way. And in fact, in the rules committee, those amendments were ripped out. Well, amazing. Uh, so much for a democratic process in which everyone has a voice in representing their constituents. That's clearly not the case. I want to focus uh, on, I think it was one of the amendments. Uh, Certainly it was a focus of a lot of the comments. Republicans focused on a $140 million rail and subway system connecting San Jose with Santa Clara in the San Francisco Bay Area near Nancy Pelosi's district. There, there was an effort to try to move this money over to mental health services for children. Uh, what does a rail and subway system have to do with coronavirus relief? It absolutely doesn't. And that's the whole when it, when I started out earlier and said this bill was for all the ring, wrong reasons, you can go through line by line of the multiple hundred page piece of legislation where it's basically payouts to a lot of their friends. This hundred forty million dollars, which is in Speaker Pelosi's backyard, should not be in the legislation, along with the millions of dollars for bridges in New York should not be in the legislation. We're talking about targeted relief that's needed for the American working class, but this is not what this bill does. And that is extremely unfortunate. You know, we need schools to reopen, and there's over $130 billion in this package for schools, but less than 5% of all that funding will actually even be spent this year. If you look at this entire bill, Tony, and you take out the – the stimulus checks directly to the people, if you take those out, almost half of all the money of this $1.9 trillion bill will not be spent until the fiscal year 22 or later. How does that help? How does that help us now? It absolutely doesn't. That's why I've said this is the wrong plan at the wrong time and for all the wrong reasons. And also, not a lot of people talk about this, but we still have over a trillion dollars of funding that was spent on the five prior bipartisan COVID packages that has yet to be spent. So now you're looking at three, tr- roughly $3 trillion that's out there to spend whenever there was a trillion in the prior packages that have yet to be spent. Uh, uh, absolutely amazing um, and baffling. Uh, quite frankly. I, I, Congressman Jason Smith, I want to ask you a question about the education because that's been a, a point of, uh, of great contention about reopening schools, uh, the unions fighting the reopening, parents wanting them to reopen. I actually think it's, it's opened the door to what's actually happening in public education. It's, called, it's caused for private education to grow and people calling for the money to follow the students, not the system. But I, I, I do have a, a very practical question. What is the additional money, all of this money needed to open these schools that have been sitting on the money that they've not been spending um, because they haven't been open? Yeah, they look at different mechanisms to for the safety aspect of coming in. But there is, like I, I mentioned, the trillion dollars of funding that has not been spent. A big portion of that is already school funding. There's school funding that was for, that was passed in the five prior bills that has yet been appropriated. Some of the school funding that was passed in this bill at 2.30 in the morning, Saturday morning, it literally will not be spent until 2024 or later. Oh. It, it just, it, it, it's awful. But you know what? Because we're going through what they refer to as the budget reconciliation process, right? because of the PAYGO Act that was passed in 2010, there's automatic um, financial sequester. And because of that, not many people are even talking about this, but Folks who are on Medicare will face almost a $36 billion cut to Medicare every year for the next 10 years just because they're going through this process. Wow. And we didn't even get to the minimum wage doubling, more than doubling the minimum wage and the impact that's going to have on people on fixed incomes. Of course, a lot of this could get caught up in the Senate 
uh, on the bird rule, which we're not going to have time to go into, but we'll talk more about the, that this, uh, this week. Jason Smith, thanks so much for taking time uh, to join us. Great to be with you, Tony. Have and, a great day. And, and thanks, for, uh, thanks for putting up the fight. You appreciate it.